And so you obviously blame a lot on uh, Bush and those other people. The nature of terrorism is a tactic. The strategy of terrorism is to attack in a reflexive way a society to go and take, in a sense, the silent majority and appeal to the extremes in that society and the extremes in the other society. So in a sense, the solution seems to be, how do you get that coalition of the same of the silent majority? But looking at the mechanisms of reflexivity in both ends, I think, would, would strengthen your book. Can you comment on reflexivity and terrorism? Well, uh, um, you know, terrorism is a certain manifestation that is not, uh, not new. I mean, it, we've had cases of terrorism uh, before, you had the anarchists in the 19th century, and, and you know, you can probably ri write a history of terrorism. So <coughs> terrorism is not a new phenomenon, and, and of course it's also not in any way a, a monolithic uh, kind of thing. It's, it takes many, very many different forms. And in, in my view, it's the way that we responded to terrorism that has pushed us off in some uh, very uh, dangerous and, and counterproductive uh, direction. And so I'm mo uh, the reflexivity is in the interplay between the terrorism and the response uh, to, to terrorism. So, um, you know, uh, uh, we used to have a president who said, we have nothing to fear but fear itself, right? We, we, we now have a president who, who said that, you know, this is just the beginning and, you know, this is a, 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 a somehow a vital threat to our survival and the next time it will come in the, in the, in, in the form of a mushroom cloud. So it wasn't even just enough to respond to the terrorism, which was terrifying enough because it, it was a, an extremely, you know, uh, uh, um, a, a traumatic uh, uh, event and that touched us all because of because of the because we saw it on okay. the television it was not just something we, we heard about so so um, a, a terrific event that was further exaggerated and then exploited to pursue certain goals that were never really announced or discussed and which one can only sort of reconstruct uh, uh, or, or try to guess. Uh, but you can, but uh, it led us into a, a, a very dangerous reaction because, in direction, uh, because uh, the war on terror is basically not the right way to fight uh, uh, terrorism. And, and uh, it has become accepted as a metaphor, as a, as a metaphor that has been taken literally and, and, and accepted as such, and today dominates political life. It actually influences the way the, the, the opposition, the Democrats, uh, are, are forming their uh, policy advice practically more than it, than it affects the Republicans. So there is reflexivity for you. Uh, where you have a distortion of reality, a misinterpretation of reality, which becomes reality. But then events uh, uh, don't, don't um, uh, follow the course that is expected of them. And so the, the, the war on terror led to the invasion of Iraq, and the invasion of Iraq created a, 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 a Quagmire from which we can't extricate ourselves. And we are now beginning to realize that something has gone wrong. And I think now the public is pretty well realizing that the invasion of Iraq was somehow wrong. But the idea that there's something wrong with the war on terror has not yet sunk in. Is still accepted as the uh, sort of the, the basis on which we 
shape policy. And I argue in the book that until we realize that, there, that it's, a, it's a metaphor which has been misinterpreted and misused, I don't think we can, we can actually extricate ourselves and correct our, our course in, in, in the world. That's, that's the connection with terrorists. Just one follow-up. I would uh, look at reflexivity, but also in terms of how do you change the populace in America, because it is a citizen democratic base. If terrorism is using it, we have to also understand how the system of communication works in informing and using something besides fear. And that would be an interesting problem to work on, the concept of reflexivity in terms of a communications interaction thinking group. Well, I don't know how you do it, but uh, uh, Arthur? I find that at the risk of uh, shifting course from the, the discussion of the here and now, in, in reading your, some of your work, I, I come away with the sense that there's, there's a connection to the work of, of Professor Hayek in describing, uh, you know, I remember a very old article he wrote about how uh, a central planned economy could never work because the individuals always have more specific and appropriate information and can harness that information. And it sounds very much like what I think you're, you're saying. And perhaps you could expand on how what you're saying is similar to or different from uh, from that work. And I think that would be... I, I think it's, it's, it's related to Hayek. I was particularly um, influenced by Popper. And Popper was a close friend and um, uh, disputant with Hayek. They engaged in, 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 a, in a friendly dispute uh, in, the, in the 40s. Uh, there was a series of uh, uh, articles in the Economica. Uh, one was, I think, the basis of the road, road to serfdom. And the other one, the I think the historicism, something. Uh, poverty what, poverty hmm? of historicism. The, pover the poverty of historicism. So it was a, a, a really profound philosophical uh, a, a, a discussion where they both uh, had the same uh, basic uh, basis on which they 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 talked. Uh, but uh, Hayek. Um, believed in the ability of the market to sort of uh, uh, produce equilibrium and, uh, and achieve the optimum allocation of the resources. And I, I, am a, I differ from him because I th while I accept that it would be wonderful if the market produced that result, uh, it would be a sort of an escape from the human predicament, uh, but it isn't. I mean, it doesn't correspond to reality, because markets, and particularly financial markets, uh, don't necessarily tend towards a theoretical equilibrium. So, uh, because I, because people are not basing their judgments on. Information. First of all, of course, information is uh, is is uh, asymmetric. I mean, you've got uh, Joe Stiglitz and all that. But but I, I go a little further than Joe Stiglitz because I I don't think that information is enough to to come to rational decisions. So because uh, you have to interpret the information. You have to form a judgment about what is going to happen, and what is going to happen depends on your judgment. Therefore, it's not something to be known. It's something to be decided. And so you have this built-in bias, which uh, uh, often manifests itself in self-reinforcing processes. So you can dig yourself into, into various holes. The war on terrorism and, and the invasion of Iraq is one hole, but you, you can, you can you know, get, become enthusiastic about the internet, and you can have an internet bubble. 